Hello everyone and welcome to episode 3 of Minuteman Lessons. In this episode, I will be repurposing the audio from an old podcast that I did. So today we're going to be learning about the lessons that we can learn from the Mujahideen in Afghanistan. How they defeated the Russians back in the 80s. The tactics they used. All that stuff. So, I hope you enjoy. Get out your pens and your notebooks. Take notes. Welcome to Modern Frontiersmen. So, let's get going. The Soviet invasion of Afghanistan was a long and armed conflict that lasted uh, from 1979 to 1989, about 10 years. The Soviet Union, uh, they, they intervened and supported the Afghan communist government that had come to power in a coup in 1978. The coup had sparked a popular uprising among the majority of Afghan people who were, they were mostly rural, conservative, and devout Muslims. The rebels, who called themselves the Mujahideen, which means holy warriors, uh, fought to overthrow the communists and restore the Islamic law, uh, Sharia, and uh, tr the traditional culture of the country of Afghanistan. Uh, the Mujahideen were supported by several different countries, um, including the U.S., uh, the uh, Pakistanis, Saudi Arabia, and China who saw the Soviet um, intervention as a threat to their own interests and their influence in the region. But uh, the Mujahideen, they, they faced a formidable enemy in the Soviet army, which was one of the largest and, and the most powerful in the world at the time. The Soviets, they had more than 100,000 troops uh, equipped with tanks, helicopters, jets, artillery, and chemical weapons even. The Mujahideen, on the other hand, um, they really had no regular army. They had no air force at all. Uh, they had not really no heavy weapons and, and no real central command. They were just a loose like a group of different factions, tribes, different ethnic groups uh, with different degrees of uh, ideologies, uh, political and religious views. Um, they relied mostly on, on small arms, rifles, pistols, RPGs. That they either either they captured them from the Russians, uh, they smuggled them from other countries, or they even made them locally. Uh, for those that don't know, there is a market in Afghanistan where they are are making their own weapons. There they make their they make guns uh, in these little shops, you know, largely by hand. So how did the Mujahideen uh, manage to fight against these um, crazy odds? Well, the answer is in their use of guerrilla warfare, the thing that we've been talking about. And the reason why we're covering this topic. The Mujahideen used their, their knowledge of the terrain, the, the mobility, the stealth, and the surprise uh, to harass and weaken the Soviet forces. And they avoided direct confrontation and battles. They also used their network of supporters, their, their sympathizers, and their informers in the local population to gather intelligence, get supplies, and recruit new fighters. Which is exactly why I've said in previous episodes that it's important to win the hearts, win and keep the hearts and minds of the population uh, that you are operating in. Some of the main tactics that the Mujahideen used in their guerrilla warfare were one, ambushes. Uh, they would set up traps, uh, hidden positions along the roads, the passes, the deep valleys uh, that the Soviet convoys uh, and patrols would use. Then they would attack them with small arms, uh, with rockets and mines. Uh, inflicting you know massive casualties and damage and then they would just retreat real quick before the enemy could react or, or reinforce the position uh, the Mujahideen also uh, ambushed uh, used ambushes to capture weapons the am ammo and vehicles from the Soviets that they then used uh, against them in the future um, in future attacks uh, they also used raids the Mujahideen would launch surprise attacks on Soviet bases outposts and installations especially at night or during bad weather a while back I did a little video talking about uh, you know operating in bad weather that perhaps that might be at sometimes the best time to to operate when it's not expected you know during a thunderstorm or something because they, they would use stealth they would use speed and shock to overwhelm the enemy real quick uh, destroy their equipment and facilities and, and free their prisoners 
then they'd withdraw rapidly uh taking advantage of the darkness and the terrain to to evade uh being followed and evade pursuit they would use sabotage uh, they would target the soviet infrastructure and communication systems like bridges pipelines power lines radio stations radar sites uh, they'd use explosive or rpgs uh, or or even fire to, to disable or destroy them disrupting the enemy's supply mobility and coordination they would also plant mines and booby traps along the roads and the trails uh, causing casualties and and fear amongst the soviet troops and vehicles i remember actually i know i've read um, accounts and seen documentaries and, and videos of, of soviet pilots in tears afraid to fly over top of the mountains because the mujahideen was dropping aircraft left and right uh, largely with like stingers and things that were given by the United States United States which um, as we'll talk about here in, in a moment uh, ended up biting the US in the in the butt they would also use propaganda the mujahideen would use various means to spread their message and their influence amongst the Afghan people and the world propaganda is often used as a bad word uh, but it is necessary they would use leaflets posters graffiti radio broadcasts um, like risky and some others talked about you know using those shortwave radios it works and cassette tapes uh, to inform educate and mobilize the population and to expose uh, th those atrocities and the corruption of the soviet and the communist communist forces that they were fighting against They'd also use videos, photos, and interviews to document um, their, their victories, their, their wins, and their successes, and, and appeal for support and even sympathy from the international community, as we still see uh, being done today. The Mujahideen's uh, guerrilla warfare, it really proved to be very effective um, and successful against the Soviet forces, who were not prepared, or, and they were not trained for a war like that. The, the Soviets suffered, uh, suffered heavy losses in, in men, and not only in men, but material and morale, which is huge. And were, they were unable to secure or control the vast and, and the, the very rugged territory in Afghanistan. The Mujahideen, on the other hand, they gained a lot of confidence. They gained experience and reputation, and they were able to really sustain and expand their resistance. The war became a cluster you-know-what. And uh, it became a nightmare for the Soviet Union, which was it was already facing economic and political problems as it was at home and abroad. Uh, but the war became a catalyst um, and really a symbol for the uh, global and regional struggle between the communist and capitalist uh, blocks of the world and between the secular and the religious forces. The war ended in 1989 uh, when the Soviet Union withdrew from Afghanistan uh, due to a peace agreement that was kind of brokered by the United Nations. The withdrawal was seen as a humiliating uh, defeat and really was a major blow for the Soviet for the Soviet superpower, which soon collapsed in 1991. The war had also uh, it had a, a real lasting impact and consequences for Afghanistan and the world. The war really left Afghanistan devastated, impoverished, and traumatized, uh, with millions of people dead, wounded, and, and displaced. It also created a power vacuum and a civil war as the different Mujahideen factions uh, fought amongst themselves for the control of the country. Um, it, it also gave rise to new radical groups like the Taliban and Al-Qaeda, who emerged from the ranks of the Mujahideen and who would later pose new threats and challenges to the region and the world. You know, as, as we know, we helped them. We funded these guys and we, we helped them um, during their struggle with the, with the Russians. Uh, but some of those guys went on to become enemies of the United States, like the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. Um, and this is also what we saw in Iraq. Our invasion destabilized the country and different factions started fighting against each other and uh, you basically have civil wars start popping up. Um, that, that's just kind of what happens. It's unfortunate, but that's the way it goes. But I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope you understand why we are talking about these conflicts. I hope these, this is something that you 
learn from. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I learned, and you learned something new about the tactics used in Afghanistan uh, and against the Russians and uh, the lessons we can learn from that as preppers, as Minutemen, as you know, good, upright, decent human beings and uh, American citizens that are willing to stand up and defend our country. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please feel free, as always, to contact me at modernfrontiersmanchannel at gmail.com. Thank you for listening, and have a great day. In the words of Joe Biden, I don't know about you, but I think I'm going to go take a nap. As always, stay self-reliant.